daydreaming. It's something that a lot of us do when we get bored. Maybe you're sitting in a boring meeting at work, or maybe you're in a boring class at school and your mind starts to wander a little bit. But there's actually a form of mental illness associated with daydreaming, and it's called maladaptive daydreaming. And that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this video. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. I am always trying to make videos to help you improve your mental and emotional well-being. And sometimes I just like to increase awareness and educate people about different mental illnesses out there so maybe you can get the help that you need or maybe you can help somebody that you know. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe, ring that little notification bell because I make a ton of videos. So this is very interesting. I love learning about mental health like in all ways. I like learning about new disorders that I didn't know about. I like learning about different treatment methods and stuff. And my girlfriend actually told me about this one, which is called maladaptive daydreaming. And one of the reasons that I've never heard of it is because it's not in this little guy. All right, for those of you who don't know, this is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, all right? This is what doctors, psychiatrists, uh, therapists, and things like that, they use as kind of like this framework to uh, diagnose different mental illnesses. So if you fit certain criteria, they'll look to this book and say, okay, do they fit in here? So this is actually something that is not inside the DSM. So let's talk about it a little bit. What is maladaptive daydreaming or like excessive fantasizing? So this is daydreaming to, to pretty much cope with life, to cope with stress. Um, for some people, this can go to extremes, which I'll touch on pretty soon, but let's talk about what causes maladaptive daydreaming. So it's important to kind of look at this in kind of the same realm as depersonalization and derealization. So most of the people who have maladaptive daydreaming, like I don't wanna say struggle with it because for some people it's a useful tool, you know what I mean? But for most people who have maladaptive daydreaming, they were the victim of some sort of trauma, okay? So we're talking about childhood trauma, whether it was verbal, physical, emotional, sexual abuse, those types of things, right? Um, it could have been a trauma later in life. Usually people who struggle with this, it's, it's usually when they, um, have extreme amounts of stress. So this can be common, um, like when people experience different triggers, kind of like PTSD. So look at this in the realm of PTSD, as well as depersonalization and derealization. So basically, people with B, uh, PTSD, they can depersonalize or they can derealize when they get triggered, right? They can separate from their bodies. It feels like nothing's real or feels like they're, they're like uh, a robot and they don't really have any kind of like attachments or emotions and am I even myself, okay? So this is something that people with PTSD PTSD struggle with, but maladaptive daydreaming is something else. So what is it? Basically, it's, it's daydreaming to an extreme. So this can last for hours and hours and hours on end. And for some people, this is a useful tool, right? It helps them cope with their stress. It helps them deal with different triggers in their lives and things like that. So this can be a useful tool in certain situations. Like say, for example, you're a, a young person. Like this is something a lot of young people struggle with is just being stuck in a bad household, right? Maybe you have alcoholic or drug addict parents. Maybe somebody in the house is abusive or things like that. Or maybe you're an adult and you're stuck in a not so great living situation that has a lot of stress. Like sometimes with this daydreaming, it's creating an entire narrative, right? This entire story and fantasizing about where else you would rather be or what you would like to become and things like that. Like this is where I kind of look at it as, as a benefit. Like maybe it, it helps you like visualize your goals and what you want to do. Like my recommendation for that is like write this stuff down and then like maybe take small steps to achieve that goal because people are creating this scenario like anywhere else they would rather be. Now, let's talk about the, the struggle, right, of maladaptive daydreaming. So like when uh, I was reading up on this, like there were some articles where people would do this for like five, six, seven, eight hours a day, right? Now, this is where mental illness, you know, is, is an issue because if you, if you could imagine if a third of your day, wait, is that a third? No, it's a fourth of your day is spent in this like daydreaming state, like 
You're gonna have issues at work or at school or taking care of your family or taking care of yourself. Like you are losing these large chunks of time. So that can be a problem, right? So they, uh, one of the videos I was watching on this saying there's no treatment for it, which is not really true. Um, what I would assume if you went to a therapist, right, and you talked about how you are struggling with this, like maybe you're watching this video you're like, oh, hey, I have this issue, maybe I'll talk to a therapist about it, is they would try to get you to do a lot of different grounding techniques, right? Or like dialectical behavioral therapy to bring you back to the now, to bring you back to the moment. So for example, like a lot of dialectical behavioral therapy is based around mindfulness. And mindfulness is constantly coming back to the moment. So over time, as you strengthen this skill and ability, you start to notice when your mind starts to wander and you're like, oh, this maladaptive daydreaming is happening, I'm gonna bring it back down. Same thing if anybody's struggling with depersonalization or derealization or anything like that. So there are treatments that can work with it. So I don't believe if anybody says, oh, well, since it's not in the DSM, there's no treatment for it, that's baloney. You would use similar techniques that you would use with somebody who struggles with PTSD. It might even be helpful to find a therapist who specializes in something called EMDR therapy. EMDR therapy is extremely beneficial to, uh, for people who struggle with PTSD, all right? So I, I was really happy to make this video. Thank you to my lovely girlfriend for introducing me to this topic. And if you can relate to some of these symptoms or if you think somebody can relate to it, you know, um, I will provide some resources down below. Like, just read a book about dialectical behavioral therapy or there's a link to BetterHelp Online Therapy. If you didn't know, that is an affiliate link. So when you use that link and use BetterHelp Online Therapy, it also helps support the channel. It's an amazing, amazing app or website, however you choose to use it. Basically, you fill out a questionnaire, it matches you up with a perfect therapist in your state and like you don't even have to leave your house. And it's very easy like, me, I know like uh, I'm way more comfortable talking to people through messages or things like that. So this might be a great option for you. And even if you don't use BetterHelp, like, and you have insurance or something, like go find your own therapist. But BetterHelp does have a sliding scale. So if you make less money, then your costs will actually be cheaper. So if you wanna check out BetterHelp, make sure you check down in the description as well as in the uh, comment section. I'll post it in there. I'll also post a great book about dialectical behavioral therapy down there if you wanna check that out, all right? But leave any other comments down below if you ever struggled with this or you currently struggle with this. Like, uh, when I heard about this, I'm like, do more people struggle with this? Like, I don't even know. So let me know down in the comments below, all right? But that's all I got for you for this video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And again, if if you are new, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you want to check out the Rewired Soul merch shop, we got some awesome shirts and coffee mugs in there. You can click or tap right over there. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.